Hello， 大家好，我系 Sue Marguerite， thank you for joining me here on my little Cantonese corner。今日二零一八年十二月二号星期日 ，so today is Sunday, December second, two thousand eighteen， and I'm here to talk to you today about verbs and a little bit more。And the reason is because originally I wanted to do a conversation about Christmas, give you some conversation prompts.、Uh, usually, what people talk about in Hong Kong during Christmas is where they're going.、Um, it's a holiday here where a lot of people will travel.、Um, it's not really celebrated the way it is in the States, where you all go home and you have a, a family meal and open presents. Here, it's about exchanging gifts, but more about traveling. So in doing so, I realized that oh, this is a great opportunity to talk about verb forms. So that's what we're going to do. And first, I'd like to introduce you to them on the board here. Now, Cantonese people will say there's there's little grammar, and it's true. Like in English, there's twelve or some different verb tenses you need to learn, the different forms, the different special endings, and all the rest of it. In Cantonese,、uh, you don't. So future tense in Cantonese is simply woi. Woi, it's the low rising woi, and this is your will、uh, when combined with another verb. When you match it with an adjective or something, or a, an instance where you'd be using the verb to be, which remember is hai, then you wouldn't be using the hai. It's just woi. So it can function as will be and not just the will. And an example of that would be again talking about the weather and saying gum yat ho yi. Right, today is very hot. I.、Uh, Same. If your today is going to be or today will be hot, gum yat woi ho yi. You wouldn't say gum yat woi hai ho yi. You won't use the hai. Anyway, so that's the woi. It's pretty straightforward. The next one is also pretty straightforward. It is gun, gun, and this is your ing form of the verb. So if you wanted to say eating, eating is sick, right? Sick. So sick gun. Hey, I'm also gun fun. Maybe someone calls you or texts you, and you're like, "What are you doing? I'm eating dinner." Hey, I'm also gun fun. So gun is your ing form. Again, pretty straightforward.、Um, and then we come to jaw, jaw, like that mid-rising jaw. That is your past tense ed, meaning it's finished. It's in the past. You did it. It's done. It's over. Finished. Okay, that's when you'll use the jaw, the simple past tense, or your Ed form in English, okay, jaw, and you know you probably even if you're just learning, you will have already used the jaw when down here when you're using the sick jaw, sick jaw fa mea, that lunchtime greeting. If people are asking you, have you eaten yet, as a form of greeting, sick jaw fa mea, they're using that jaw, which means have you eaten, have you finished eating, did you just eat? I guess、um, eat lunch, and you'd say sick jaw, sick jaw la. Uh, yes, I did. I ate it. It's done. It's finished. I'm done. <laughs> sick jaw, sick jaw la. Or maya may is your、uh, not yet, right? May, may is it fun? Notice the may must go before the verb in a statement. So you'd say and all may is it fun? Unlike in English, when you could say I haven't eaten yet and put the yet at the end. In Cantonese, it has to go before the verb when you're making a statement. Okay, so the next one is guo. Guo. When you're talking about a verb, means your present perfect. It's your has or your have with the past tense, which is usually ed、um, in English. The guo. But this one is really quite interesting. I find、um, this is the way to write it in Chinese character, and it is used in different parts of speech. Which in English you not necessarily would connect these, and we don't use it in the same way. But this guo. This guo will show up in different ways. By itself, guo means to pass, to pass by, or to, for example, if you're in a taxi and you say like, um, uh, 过咗，诶，过咗前边灯后，诶，之后转左。Like for example, you'd say, uh, after you pass the light in front of us, then turn left. I think I said, <laughs> then turn left. So that's one way to use it to literally mean when you're passing something by. And yes, the past tense jaw is the same sound and tone as a direction left jaw. In fact, the character is the same, but the past tense jaw has a little mouth in front of it to show its spoken form. So jaw past tense and jaw left. Okay, now let's go back to the verb ending guo. When you tack it on and you use it in the sense of a verb, it means a past experience, something that you've gone through in the past. 
that maybe doesn't have a definite date and time. Maybe it's um, it's it's more like that present perfect, right? Where it's not a definite fixed date and time, and it may or may not be completely over. Okay, the guo, a past experience, I guess, is a good way to think about it. Um, and another way that they use it is if you're comparing two adjectives. So, for example, I am short. I'm not that tall. Um, I'm short and you are taller than me. So if you wanted to say you were taller than me, you would say at eh, all, meaning you. Well, let's just make it me, okay? So I'm taller than you. At eh, all, eh, go go, go is tall. At eh, all, go go lei, I'm taller than you, right? So that's another way that they use this same character, which means to pass or to experience. So I guess it's, it makes sense, right? Like if you're taller than me, you've passed me in height. So I'll go go lei, um, in that sense. So that's, in English, you wouldn't ever think to use that. You'd just be using, for example, the adjective form. You'd be using the ER and the EST, right? And the guo wouldn't come into it at all. But the guo in Chinese is, is shared around in the adjective form, in the verb itself, which means to pass by, and also tacked on as a little add-on to make it the present perfect and to express that you've experienced something. And that's what we're going to be focusing on today. So I hope all that wasn't too confusing. I think I need a whole lesson just on the guo, and maybe I'll do that. But just uh, let's focus now on how you're going to use it to talk about places that you have been and have experienced, okay? So I think um, it goes along with the yao and the mo, okay? Yao mo is asking, did you have? So basically, yao mo hou guo, le yao mo hou guo. Well, those are my examples, okay? So we're going to get to those in just a second. But um, yao and mo is have and don't have. You use it with your verb, there comes the guo. And you'll sometimes use it with the mei. Mei is not yet. Okay, so on the board it looks like the mei comes after the yao mo, but no, don't use the yao mo if you're using mei. You just say lei hui guo fa got mei ya. So I'm gonna move this a little bit. If you finish writing it, I'm just gonna move it up a little bit. I hope. I can bring it back down later when you finish, or you can always pause the video. Um, and I'll bring this one around. Okay, it's getting kind of dark, the sun's going down, but I think you can still see. Apologize for the glare. Um, but okay, so the first one is lei, lei mo hu go fa go. Okay, you have or have not gone. Um, in English, you'd say to, but there's no to really in Chinese. And then France is fa guang. Fa, sometimes I'll just say fa guo, right? Fa guo, fa guo. It's technically should be the guo. Guo ga is country, so fa guo is France. Um, I chose France, why? Because I thought this lei yao mo is all those low rising. Lei yao mo. And then ho fa guo is just blom blom blom. <laughs> it's just the ho fa guo is all that mid tone right there. So leo mo hu go fa go is just all staying right there in that mid-tone range. And literally it's asking, have you gone to France before? Um, and there's a lot of different answers you could give. So here's our water cooler answers if you're talking about uh, where you're going on holiday and somebody asks you, leo mo hu go fa go. Um, there's different ways they could ask it too, but we're going to stick with just this way of asking it. You could say, eh, mo, eh, mo yao hu go. Again, do, 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 do. Eh, mo yao hu go. of course you could just say yao, yao, yeah, I have, right, yao. But if you wanted to say the complete sentence, it would be mo yao hu go. Eh, mo yao hu go. or guo, technically. Uh, if you, that means it, I have gone, right? If you haven't gone, you'd be using the mo, you would just say like mo o mo hu go. You could say mo hu guo or mo meaning you, eh, I haven't been before, okay? Another way is to say, eh, this is, I haven't been there yet. Your may is your yet, okay? And that means up here, not yet. I haven't been there yet. Maybe I plan to go, I hope to go, but not yet. Uh, over here, here's some different ways that if someone asks you, have you been to France, you could say, oh, Eh, eh, last month, 
and 我上个月去咗 ，OK。This would be I went there last month. I'm done, finished, over. I went there last month, and that's why you would use the jaw, because you went there. Okay. If you wanted to say ah, I will go, and I will go, I will go, right? Usually you would tell them when then, right? And I sing dan will go, and I sing dan sing dan is Christmas, and I sing dan will go. And if you wanted to say this one here. And、um, just adding that, well, yeah, I said sing dan, but here's <laughs> 下个月 and 我下个月会去 and 我 I 下个月 next month 下个我下个月诶、uh, 会去 I'll go next month and then and maybe you are on your airplane. That's a really poor drawing of an airplane. But and 我去紧 and 我去去紧 is I'm going there now. Or if you wanted to use the now, what is now? Do you remember? 依家，依家 is now. So, 誒、uh, ，我依家去緊。I'm going now. If you wanted to emphasize the now, or just 誒、uh, ，我去緊 is I'm going. Okay, 誒、uh, ，我去緊。Okay, so those are different ways to、um, answer a question. Have you gone to France before? The way to ask the question again is you have to add the 有冇去過，有冇去過。And then you can put in wherever you want to say、uh, that you've been to. Lay on my go, hard rock cafe, sick dinner. Lay on my go. I don't know anywhere you want to talk about.、Uh, and it could be you. You can again substitute all of your subjects here. Koi, koi, on my go, Japan. Koi, on my go, Japan. Has he been or she been to France?、Uh, sorry, Japan before. Um, that would be a way to ask that. There you go again, all the different verb forms.、Um, thank you again so much, you guys, for joining me here. Please answer, answer. Please ask questions down in the comments if you have them. I love answering them and finding out and learning more about this awesome language, Cantonese. If you do like this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you again here on my little Cantonese corner. Bye.